So I think we're on point G yesterday. Doping adds impurities to the semiconductor material. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. An element with five electrons is added to one side to create an extra electron. Two, this is the negative side, n-type or cathode, which is antimony for germanium, phosphorus, or arsenic for silicon, right? Yep. And I think we're on the very next point. Three? Yep. An element with three electrons is added to one side to create a hole. Point three. Mm -hmm. So I'm at. All right, an element. With three electrons. Three electrons is added is added uh, to one side mm -hmm. to one side of the diode or transistor, if you will, um, to create a hole, to create, create a hole. Well, that's the smiley face that was missing, that an extra, was missing something. Um, this is the positive side. This is the positive side. Positive side, P, which is the P-type. E type or anode. All right, the spot, the spot where uh, two elements come together, where two elements come together is known as the what? Ooh, you're very close. The junction is known as the junction. And within the junction, what do we get? The barrier, also called depletion zone. Let's see here. Let me just talk about it a little bit more in case you slept through the video. All right, so here we have a diode. And a diode consists of one N type and one P type, basically bored, doped together. And that creates the diode. And so we have two ways of looking at it, forward bias and reverse bias. So reverse bias is the same thing as reverse bias is on or off? Off. off. Right there. Forward bias, reverse, B, B, reverse bias. This is B down here. And then forward bias is on, okay? Because you have to keep those straight because books will often talk just simply in reverse bias, forward bias, forward bias, reverse bias, not on, off, on, off, and you have to think about that. So forward bias, reverse bias. The other thing that will get a little confusing is we go back to, um, as we looked at the rectifier bridge circuit, how it's not total absolutes, but one thing is negative in reference to, it's not the absolute negative. So down here, looking at the reverse bias, we'll start down here in the off position. So we have the thing in the middle, which is called the junction. the junction. And the junction in the reverse bias here creates this zone, also called the depletion, depletion zone. zone. All right, why is it the depletion zone? Because it's not in there, it's been depleted. But why is it depleted? Because uh, in reference to the polarity of uh, the power source, each side wants to separate. Yeah, okay. So if we look down here, Notice we got a negative on this side and a positive on this side. And the positive is going to attract? Negative. Negative. 
negatives. So here we have all the electrons kind of want to flow this way, right? So they're going to gravitate towards the right. And holes represent the positives, if you will. And so we can think about those as positives. And so the negative attracted the positives within here. Well, and you think, okay, well, the positive is attracting the negatives. Well, fine. So wouldn't they all flow? Well, they won't because you kind of run out. We had no more negatives in here, so they all sort of collect up on the wall here. So that's what happens with your diodes or your LED when you put them in backwards in your circuit that we had in weeks one, two, and whatever. All right, so that's, that's off. So no current flow whatsoever. Uh, then we go forward bias up here, and we have the positive now on this side and the negative on this side. Well, the negative is going to attract or repel. Repel. So it's going to start repelling all of these electrons this way. And of course, um, the, z the, the zeros are holes, but if you think about them as positives, then the positive is going to repel them. Um, but of course, we don't really have a positive thing in there that's being repelled. It's just a, a, a place where a, an electron can go. So you can look at it as the positives move to the right, or you can just think, well, whatever. The negatives are all moving to the left. There's a hole for a place for it to go, so it's going to jump from hole to hole to hole and then back out. And hole to hole to hole to hole and back out. So there we go. So that is forward bias, and it is on. So backing up just a little bit, we have a diode, and we have a battery. What's going to make it on? We have the P and the N type. We have P and an N. So it would be P here and then the N here would be on. So it's kind of matching the P with the positive, the N with the, the negative. That is the on position. Hey, Kevin? Yeah. In the bottom diagram, how come the electrons from the battery don't just go in the holes? How come the electrons from the battery don't fill in the holes? Because it's like an open circuit right here. Because right, so nothing's flowing. Yeah. That's what creates the depletion. So it's the electrons filling the holes on the other side. Yeah, pretty much. And then the battery reverse bias like that just makes the depletion even more so. so that's why I look at it. Big open. Just sucks everything out to the outsides and like what's left in the middle? Big old void. No wire, if you will. No way for it to flow. And I think. Oh yeah, that thing. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about the diode. The diode. What do I have here about the diode? All right, like an electrical check valve. I wrote that before. Like an electrical check valve. Like an electric check valve. It's schematically drawn like that. So we got. There we go. And if we look at it, we talked about before, which way would you think electricity would flow? Well, I would think it would flow that way because it's got the arrow pointing that way. For you, it's that way. So arrow to the right. So I think, well, that's the way it should flow. But that would only be true if this is the positive and that's the negative. So it's kind of drawn in more of a conventional theory. Um, that would be forward bias this way. If the positive's here and the negative's there, that is forward bias. Or another way of looking at it is this little thing right here is the negative. So you've attached the negative to the negative side, which is right there. Then it's going to be on. So that's forward bias. So like an electrical check valve. Let me see. Note the arrow shows. I have the arrow. The arrow shows direction. Arrow shows direction for conventional theory. which is plus to minus. 
or we can take the negative or the, um, the negative mark. Negative mark can be thought of as the negative side. The negative mark can be thought of, thought of, negative mark can be thought of as the negative side or electron theory, if you like that. Also kind of looks like a battery cell. It's got the long line on the left and the short line on the right. Ooh, I like that. How's that now? Yeah, so the, if you like look past the triangle, the line on the left is the long line. That's, that's the long line. Which is positive. Which is positive, okay. And this is the short line, which would be like, Negative. like that. Hey, it's not bad. Not like that. <clears throat> so in a diode, as you know, current only flows one way. In one direction. When forward biased, so when forward biased, electrons flow into the n type. Into n type. Uh, pass through the junction. And out the P type. When the diode is reversed biased, which is off. I don't know what my notes are because I covered up with a picture. Um, we'll just say diode is off. Because electrons are unable to flow through the junction. Diodes have very low resistance in one direction. And measure open in the other. So very low resistance in one direction. Is that the forward or reverse bias? Forward. Forward. And then open would be? Reverse. Reverse. Reverse bias. And we know, well, actually I'm getting ahead of myself, so I'll just write it. Mm. What is the resistance then? indicated resistance with the no meter is dependent on what? Anybody know? The what? Input voltage. So I had you try that experiment. I don't know if you did it or not. And your LED project. I said, hey, take your, your voltmeter and do different settings. And then, you know, on the R times 1, you're going to get one resistance. And R times 100, you get something else. R times 10,000, you get something else. So it's just all over the board. So it's like 
and the reason why is because when you're actually changing the switch on the meter, you're changing the batteries and you're putting a different voltage into the diode. So it's going to tell you a different resistance because it's all based because the voltage changes. So it doesn't work. Can't measure the resistance. However, a digital, a digital VOM voltmeter uh, will measure voltage drops. or the voltage across a diode. So a lot of them have actually a diode checker. That's what that is. Uh, let me see, a silicon. Will show about, will show about a 0.6 volt drop, 0.6 volts in forward bias. and a zero volt in reverse bias. So no voltage drop. Uh, germanium is a little different. Germanium is about 3.3. 3. Um, and forward went on. So the takeaway there is you can't measure the resistance of a diode. So what do you do if you have a diode installed in an aircraft and you're like, hey, what is the voltage? What is the resistance of that diode? Calculate. How would you do that? What you do is you measure the resistance of every component in the aircraft. That's a good start. That gives you your total resistance. Then you measure the battery, and then you... Does that include the tires? <laughs> Sorry. We, we, I had this conversation with many of you. It's like, well got to measure everything else and then subtract it from that. I'm like, mm, I could take you a lifetime in a big airplane. Yes, job security. <laughs> so what did you do your entire aviation career? Well, I had to figure out what the resistance was of a diode. So I spent uh, the last 20 years measuring the resistance of everything in this 747. Oh, but then they retired it. So I never did find out. So <laughs> and it turns out the guy just replaced it anyway, 15 years ago. So, all right. Uh, there are different, there are different types of LEDs. LEDs, I meant diodes. Different types of diodes. All right, we have the LED, which is what I just said, which is the light emitting diode. All right, how does it work? It's got light. It's got light. Put some power on it, light shines. I mean, it's like it seems. So, uh, photons. Photons, P H O T O N. Photons are released when electrons meet holes in the junction. Well, of course. I mean, that's just kind of. are released. when electrons meet holes in the junction. Um, depending on material is how you get the colors. Depending on material, different colors can be produced. And voltage drop is different for each color. Never tried it. 
I suppose it's true. So what does this mean? Photons are released between electrons meet holes in the junction. What's all that about? Huh? I don't know either. It creates light. And I wonder, you know, when they, when they invented this thing, is that what they were expecting? I mean, if somebody sit down and go, yeah, this, or did they like crap themselves? Like, oh, shit, it's going to blow. Oh, wait a minute. That's kind of cool. It kind of lights up. <laughs> and then somebody said, what use is that? They'll never have a practical application. And they were very wrong then. I'm just making all that. I don't know if that really happened. All right, we have the LED, we have the laser diodes, laser diodes. I'm sorry, I can't have to do that, I don't know why. Where do you find laser diodes? On a shark? <laughs> and just to show you how things change so fast, like, uh, this is what I had on here. So it was similar, similar to uh, to an LED. Um, where would you find them? <laughs> Used in optical storage devices. You know, like the modern CD player. <laughs> I was going to ask what an optical storage device was. <laughs> yeah, because they're practically obsolete, right? Yeah. CD players and... Hard, yeah, hard. I know what the hell was it? Oh, I think it was the the uh, Top Gun. Now on DVD and Blu-ray, I'm like, people still own those? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know we have all you know. Of course, with kids, we've got a, you know entire I mean huge boxes of VHS tapes. I was gonna say I still have a VCR. Yeah, VHS tapes. And then, you know, the, wow, we're not buying that anymore. We bought the CDs that the kids could scratch and they're really no good. Um, I, that was a really a bad idea. But now it's like we have to buy it again on, you know, Vudu or Amazon Prime or something. And because, you know, nobody actually wants to get up off the couch and put, <laughs> put a dig, go find it and put it in. So. You know it has to be reversed so you can actually play it from the beginning. Yeah. Uh, photo diodes. Photo diodes. Uh, let's see, photo diodes. The N, the N P junction, or I could have just said the junction because what other one is there? N P junction is designed to sense light. I don't know how they do that. But when light reaches the material, a DC voltage is produced. So when light uh, hits um, material, a DC voltage is produced. Now what good is that? Solar panels, light sensors. Uh, I think maybe even some smoke detectors work that way. The ones that actually uh, have the smoke. I think the cheaper ones, more expensive ones, have um, they ionize the air. Uh, we at okay. S C H O T T K Y shot key shot key diodes. All right, so shot key diode, it's kind of like a super diode, but not so much. So they have a lower voltage drop, have a lower voltage drop. So what does that mean for resistance? Oh yeah? Lower. <laughs> what kind of voltage drop do you have on a good piece of wire between? No load. What's that? Hey, lower voltage drop. So that means they are 
lower resistance, which means more efficient. More efficient, uh, they have a faster switching speed. But they have a big disadvantage. And this is a disadvantage you do not want. Reverse leakage. Reverse leakage is a bad thing. What were those chips that had Olean in it? Hmm? Sit around the bag, warning may cause <laughs> anal leakage. I was going to say reverse leakage would like the worst side effects of the drug. Yeah. I was going to say Oregon Trail. Oosh. Taco Bell. <laughs> so what does reverse leakage mean? Off isn't actually off. There you go. Off's not off. Leaks backwards. Kind of off. All right. And then we have the Zener diode. Z-E-N-E-R diode. Zener diode. They're kind of cool. So they'll work like a regular diode, you know, a check valve. But if you put, well, put enough voltage on anything, it'll, it'll go reverse bias. But they're designed when the, uh, it has a reverse bias at a certain point. It will open, it will close, just a close, and allow current to flow backwards. So if current go both ways. Um, so one way is forward bias, current flows. The other way, when it reaches a certain threshold, it uh, closes. So it allows current to flow. Current to flow in forward direction, or in forward bias. forward bias, um, same as a regular diode, um, also permits, also permits uh, current to flow in reverse, reverse bias, reverse bias when the voltage is above a certain value. certain value known as the breakdown voltage. I know what you're thinking. So what? Put enough voltage on anything, it'll break down backwards. But the idea is it didn't break, it'll still work. So remove the voltage, it didn't just melt it down. Um, let's see, considerations about diodes. Who has LED headlamps in your car? Pretty sweet. So, you know, that's a big deal now in aircraft, um, switching everything over to LEDs. But holy crap, is it expensive. So the GE bulbs, my landing light, taxi light, I want to say they're, for my aircraft, uh, 10, 15 bucks per side. Is that about right? The... Uh, Approved LED replacement, 450 aside. Gross. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, the hard part is that is if you buy an approved light that comes with an STC that is approved for the aircraft. If you go on like Aircraft Spruce and just say, Oh, I want an LED about yay big around that fits in, uh, let's say, a home built that just happens to fit in my airplane. I don't know, they're a lot cheaper. I don't know how much because I didn't do that. What's that? Put them on the prop. Don't they give away little flashlights and carbon free? That's right, just enough of those. All right, so what's the nice thing about diode lights or LEDs? Low power and they're bright and they're efficient. They don't draw much power. Small light. They last 
Oh gosh, it lasts a lot longer. Yeah, that's the re that's the main reason why people are spending the 450 bucks for LEDs. It's not that I don't have enough alternator, enough battery, um, but honestly, the the GE, the um, ones that in my airplane, they don't last but just a couple months because of the, the the constant shock and shaking up on the cowling breaks the little element, so you're constantly changing. But oh, and it's a bitch to change. It is not fun. Um, yeah, I got my cowling all the way on or the bottom cowling. And, uh, you know, you get the cowling on, you plug in the lights, and then you do a light check. And I'm like, ah, oh, damn it, one is out. I'm like, screw that, man. I'm not taking the cowling off. I spent like an hour changing the light before I took the bottom cowling off, which was a mistake. All right. Uh, okay. What about heat? They're what? Yeah, so you have, a, you have LEDs in your house? No. Well, I do, man. <laughs> So wait a minute, dad with LEDs in the house, what do I bitch about? Ah, there's still something. <laughs> you left the damn lights on. Yeah, so that'll cost you like $3 for the next 20 years to run. Uh, but LED light, you can just walk up and unscrew it. Ah, they're a little warm, but not going to burn you like something else. But it made me think of that because this point is uh, diodes get hot. They don't get that hot, though. But they do have a heat function to them. So get hot um, and are often attached and are often attached to heat sinks. So especially in like alternators, we can see some pretty big diodes, there's six of them in there. Um, they are on a big plate and that plate is air cooled because they get hot. And computers have them? Computers have them? No, that's what I'm thinking of the processor. But. Uh, but you often see, often see diodes attach some sort of heat sink, which is a piece of metal that will transfer the heat out. Maybe some sort of dielectric gel that helps transfer the heat. Um, they are used in rectifiers. We looked at that. Rectifiers. And what is a rectifier? Yep, allows um, AC voltage, AC voltage. That's a funny thing to say, AC voltage, because that really it's saying alternating current voltage. Mm -hmm. So it's really just AC to be converted to be converted to DC voltage. That's like saying I went to the automatic teller, automatic ATM machine yeah. the other day. <laughs> Although with my wife, I was go, hey, for your FYI information. <laughs> All right, we already looked at the rectifier circuit few weeks ago. Do I need to go over that? Yeah, you good? So, all right. All right, quick speed run. So we'll look at over here. So remember, we have an AC source. So I don't know if you can see that real well. One side is negative and one side is positive. This is the positive. This is the negative. It's the same thing, but we have an AC. This is how an alternator works. So an alternator is an AC generator on the car, aircraft, whatever. And it is producing AC within it, but it has a stack of diodes in the back and it looks very similar to this, a little bit different uh, because it's uh, alternators are actually a three phase item. This is a single phase, but we can see that when it comes up this way, the negative flow, it's going to get to this junction right here at A and it has a choice to make. You can go up this way or down this way. Well, look at the diodes. This is the negative side, and this means the negative turns on the negative, so this would be forward bias, and this is reverse bias, so it does not go down through diode four. It has only one choice to go up through diode one. So it gets junction C, and we have the negative, and that needs a positive, so that doesn't work, so it just easily carries on through the load. Notice going down the load. So both times we want to go down through the load because we want DC. So down through the DC, back to this junction right here. And we are now, crap. 
So this is the negative side, and this is the positive side. So we got to right here, and we're positive, right? Mm -hmm. Well, both of those are negative. So why doesn't it just die off right there? And that's the hard part, is because you have to think about what is more negative and what is less negative, what is more positive and what is not. So we're looking right here. This is the positive source, and if you kind of backtrack it up through there, um, this is the positive right here. That's fully positive. And this is a little bit more negative than that, so it's going to flow up that way. If we think about it this way, this one was full-blown negative, right? But this one had kind of gone through our load, so it's a little bit more positive this way. So if this is a little bit more positive and this is a little bit more negative, it can't go up. If this is a positive here, full-on positive, this is positive but a little less positive, then that makes it negative, so it'll travel up through there. That's the hard part. It's figuring out what's a little bit more negative, a little more positive. And that's what you kind of have to say with it. So we go this way. We're just going to go up backwards. So this is the negative. So we go up. It gets to this point right here. And we got, thankfully, arrows to help me out. Um, well, no, we got negative. We got negative right here. It's full on negative. So full on negative is going to turn on this one. So it's going to come up to here. And then we are still full on negative, so it's not going to go down. So it's going to go through the load the same way. Comes back around, gets to right here, and it's the same thing. Well, this is full blown positive right there. This is the positive side. This is positive, but a little less positive. A little less positive, so that makes it negative, so that turns it on and in. That's the hard part. A little more negative, a little less negative. Forward bias, reverse bias. And I think, no, what time is it? There we go. All right, so we got there. All right. That's a good place to take a break. Three.